Hey everyone, I'm Justin. I'm here at Ulta Beauty in Santa Monica doing the BTC Ulta Beauty Facebook Live. And I'm going to share how to create volume on fine hair textures that they still want the length at the end. So I have my model sectioned out here from the center part to the back of the ear on both sides. Let me turn around so you guys can see the other side. And I have the whole entire back of her head done. So here you see her blowout is finished, but I left the crown out. This is a crucial part of adding volume to the crown area without taking away this beautiful density and length at the bottom. For fine haired clients, we want to help them keep their density, but also give them those trending haircuts and those trending layers. And this is how you do that. So I am going to separate the back and leave this out as we're not touching the back at all. It's a one length haircut here and we wanna leave this hair one length and not cut into this because this is our background for all of the layering that we're gonna be creating. So we're gonna pretend like this hair isn't here and we're working on the sections in the front and the zigzag section on the crown. So when we're working on fine hair, we always wanna keep the hair misted and saturated with water. So whenever the hair is drying out, we want to add water as we work. So blonde hair textures and fine hair textures tend to dry a lot faster than other hair textures. So having a water bottle on hand is super important. So just saturate this so it's even on both sides because we're going to be over directing this hair forward and also creating some elevation to really create that face framing layer, almost a curtain bang into layers around the face. So I am using my Paragon 2 7 inch shears. These scissors are from Arc Scissors and I like using these because they help me create really blunt lines on the hair. So when we're creating these trending layers, any type of layers on fine hair, we want to use blunt lines. So when we're slide cutting or if we're point cutting, we're taking away the density of the layers that we're cutting. So what we want to do is use blunt lines. So you'll see me using a lot of blunt cutting in this. And typically we would want to go in with a texturizer or a blender, but in this case, we're not going to. So the first thing you want to do is take a triangular section right off of the center part here. And what this is going to do is this is going to act as our guide. So we can map out the face with this section right here. On finer hair textures like the Shawnee's here, we want to take a smaller triangle. If the hair is fine and super high density, then we want to take a larger triangle, maybe a quarter of an inch wider. But in this case, we want something small because this is our guide and we don't want it to stand out too much from the rest of the hair. So as we consulted, we decided that we wanted some type of curtainy fringe around her face that falls right at the cheekbone. So it kind of acts as a curtain bang, but it is really just a very short layer. So I'm going to hold this with tension straight out from where it lives, right over the nose and create my guide right at the tip of the nose, allowing myself some, some leeway here and we have a little extra length so that when we pull these other sections towards it, we have a guide to work off of, but it's not a super blunt guide. So take off any stragglers here and here is our guide. So we're going to start here and if we need to remove any more length so that this falls as a curtain bang, then that's what we'll do. But we want to leave a little length here because we're working with finer hair. So just making sure as I'm mapping this out that it is falling right where I want it, right at the top of the cheekbone right here. So this is, our, this is my guide and I know that my layering and my volume is going to start right here, right where we wanted it. And something that I like to look at when it comes to face shape is anywhere between the cheekbone and the jaw is an ideal area to create your guide because what this is gonna do is create a very complementary shape around the face. It's not gonna be too short and it's not gonna be too long. And as you'll see here, when I take this next section, she's got quite a bit of length here. And as I take the next section, 
she's got even more as we go all the way down. So one common mistake when we're cutting layers into fine hair is that we're not cutting enough off. We think because their hair is fine, we want to maintain all of it, but that's not necessarily true because we're going to be taking a step backwards by not creating those layers around the face. So the first step here is to cut right into this section. So I'm going to marry this next section, which is the diagonal forward section right here. That's about three quarters of an inch wide. Marry it with my guide. And then here I'll be able to find where my guide is. So if you can get a little closer, you can see this is the guide that I just cut. So this was the cheekbone guide that we set during the consultation that I just cut. And what I'm going to do is hold this out at 90 degrees and cut a blunt line right at the guide. So what we do a lot of times, something that I commonly used to do was I wouldn't cut enough hair off of the front. So here, now you'll see that this section has extended past the cheekbone. So we're still maintaining length because of the over direction, but we're still honoring the length that they had right here. We're just cutting into it slightly. So take another three quarter of an inch section here, diagonal forward and comb that right in to my guide. and cut a blunt line. If we're really worried about maintaining length here, then we want to cut just past the guide a little bit. So cutting past the guide will give us a little extra length as these layers go from short to long around the face. So again, I'm going to need to saturate this hair. And just for anyone joining, we are working on a face frame here. So we're leaving out the back. So we have the back fully finished and all we're cutting into is the face frame from behind the ear forward. All right, I resaturated. It's very important to resaturate the hair. And keep it detangled. Now I'm gonna take another three quarters of an inch section and I'm converting to vertical sectioning. So now I've gone from diagonal forward to vertical. Comb this right into the previous section and cut. Now that the section that is coming from the center part is done, I'm going to take this longer section here. You can see there's a much bigger length difference. I'm going to walk over to the other side. And now I'm going to start to wrap this around the face. So this hair is traveling a lot farther now. So I'm going to be maintaining length here. I can see my guide right here. We'll keep this right in between the tips of the fingers and the second knuckle and walk it over so it's wrapped across the face and then cut my same blunt line. So I'm cutting a lot less off, but we're gonna be in the illusion that these are connected. Now I'm taking the rest of that hair, walking it over to the other side to see if there's anything left to cut. And usually we'll see that there's a lot less to cut. So here we're working, we're cutting off about two inches, which will blend perfectly with her length when this falls back down. So now we have layers around the face that look like a fringe and we have a seamless blend all the way down to her length. And we've got one section left, but just to make sure we're using our precision cutting skills and working little by little as we're customizing this haircut, I'm going to split it into two and do the exact same thing. So if I'm above the parietal ridge here, I'm going to comb all of this straight out from where it lives. The reason why is because this is going to still cut off a lot of this length here that I need to create a layered look because ultimately I'm creating a faux layered look here. So if it's above the parietal ridge, I am 
pulling it straight out at 90. And once I see my guide start to get longer, I'm gonna shift my finger angle so that I don't cut into the sides that I just cut. Okay, so now we've got a nice angle going from short to long, and we're ready to walk this entire section over to the other side to maintain length. So for anyone just joining us, we are creating layers on fine hair. Fine hair that has about medium density. You can also do this on hair that is fine with low density. So low density hair can also be cut into layers. We just need to use techniques that we don't normally use to make sure that they are getting the look that they're requesting. So marrying this over to my previous section and looking for where I cut the previous sections. So here, I can see my guide underneath here. So I'm not sure if you guys can see that. It's very small since we just started cutting this, but my guide is right here. And we're working with blunt lines. So I'm cutting straight up and down. No point cutting. The over direction is going to give us the effect of point cutting, um, slide cutting, even the effect of using blenders or texturizers. Also for anyone just joining, I'm using my arc scissors Paragon 2. These are the seven inch. I like that I can just cut right through the hair. If I wanted to cut through the whole section, I could, but I want to give you guys the best visual that I can by separating this into multiple different smaller sections which is basically how we use precision cutting to create a not so precise haircut. So this is all based on things we've all learned in beauty school. If we are all professionals watching, uh, we're just kind of using that and shifting what we know, shifting what we know, shifting how we use what we know and customizing a haircut for our clients. So now I'm, I'm fully committing to this short to long angle here. And now that I'm at the parietal ridge, I'm still cutting this straight out at 90, but I'm using a short to long angle so I don't cut into the guide underneath. Because what we've done is we've walked all of this hair over to the other side to maintain length. So I need to mimic that as I transition the parietal ridge and the crown into the temple area. This is the last section, walking it over looking for a guide my guide is much stronger now so you guys can see my guide under there quite well this is what i'm looking for and my paragon 7 is allowing me to cut right through this entire section and i can move on before i go to the other side what you will see is that i've maintained almost all of ashani's length here so this is going to meet up almost perfectly with the length in the back and the back that we left for those of you just joining is a one length cut that we are leaving out as a background for these layers to live on. So this is going to keep the density of the look as a whole while these layers are going to flow over it when they're dry and create a layered look. It's almost like a faux layered haircut. So there's a quick visual for you. Now I'll be moving on to the other side. Again, for everyone joining, this is how to create a layered face frame on fine hair so that we can service our guests with the trending haircuts as we see online, the, the long shag, the butterfly haircut, butterfly layers. This is a great way to provide that for your clients that have fine hair that you're also, maybe both of you are a little weary about cutting into their fine hair. We are using this technique of leaving the back out and cutting face framing layers to give a faux butterfly or a faux shag look. So now that she's fully misted down, and I have enough moisture in the hair, I am going to detangle and again take a diagonal forward section right off of my guide, which was a tiny triangular section off of the center part. We're over directing this right over the nose. And if I have to, I'll pull this a little bit of my guide from the other side in so I don't lose 
my guide. Comb this at nine, hold this at 90 degrees. There's my guide right there. It's a little baby guide at the moment. So we're really keeping an eye out for our guide at this point in the cut and cutting straight up and down. And again, you'll see this automatically creates a short to long shape right here, going from short to long, falling right at the cheekbone where we decided we'd like these layers to start. As I move back, I'm taking another diagonal forward section, detangling the root, because if we don't detangle the root, we may have some inconsistent results. So we wanna detangle the root always before we move on to finding our guide. So now you can see the guide through this hair. If you can't see that, pull the hair back just as insurance for yourself. There's the guide. I'm cutting straight up and down here and maybe slightly past my guide to create some extra length for these layers to trickle down into the temple section. Now that I have reached the hairline here and I'm at the recession line, I'm going to shift my angle of my sections to vertical. I've got vertical sections now. Maybe put a little bit more of this in so we can create a strong guide for what we're going to be wrapping around the face. Anything above the parietal ridge, I'm combing straight out at 90 degrees, detangling that root, combing this straight out. This is our face frame. Curtain bang, if you will, cutting straight up and down a blunt line. And now I'm going to be walking this hair here at the temples below the parietal ridge over to the other side. Now doing this is going to over direct the hair even farther. So it's traveling farther. The farther the hair will travel, the longer length you'll have when you cut that hair. So now instead of being on the cheekbone, we're falling right here below the chin, but there'll be layers connecting all of it because of the over direction and the elevation. Walk over any remaining hair and you will notice that there's a lot less to cut. So here we've got that same two inches, two to three inches left to cut. And we only have the rest of this temple section to work with. Anything above the parietal ridge, straight out from where it lives. Check for your guide if you have to. And cut slightly past. Now we are below the parietal ridge. So we're gonna walk this over to the other side and wrap it around the face and look for our guide underneath. Right now it's a very small guide, so keep your eye out for that length. You can use this guide here, which was from above the parietal ridge, as your guide. Just know that underneath here somewhere, you have a guide that you can slide through and find. As long as you see a little bit of it, you're good to go. If you can't, then just bring in a little bit more. I really wanna give you guys a visual of this. Bring in some of that hair from the parietal ridge. And look for where that guide is. Any of the little hairs that stick out, like these ones here, that means you're good to cut straight up and down. Even though this hair here seems very thin, it's like, been, you know, it's around the hairline, it's finer hair. We really want to include that and use the exact same tension, over direction, and elevation, because if we don't, then we're going to end up with some hairs that are longer than others and it won't look right. So I find my guide right here. And again, I have about that same two to three inches to cut. That tells me that I'm on the right track. You start to see less hair on one side or less hair that doesn't match up different lengths, that means you might wanna reconsider that guide and really look for where that's at. So now we're gonna shift our finger angle again to mimic that short to long length. I can see my guide right here. The over direction from it gave me a natural short to long length. So I have to honor that as I'm moving forward and make sure that I don't cut into it because that was the length that we preserved for our client and what they were asking for. 
walk this over to the other side. Same two to three inches right here. So I can just simply cut and go. And I've got my last section right here. This is the best part when you have a really strong guide because all you have to do is look for it through the hair, making sure my tension is extremely high from the right side of the head over to the left, walking my whole body over to the other side. And looking for that guide right there. Putting straight up and down. And here is the last section. Right here. And that is how you create the face frame. And next we're going to go into the crown section. This zigzag section right here is how we're going to marry the front into the back. But before we do that, we need to check for balance, make sure that we have the same length on each side. You can already see she's got this faux curtain bang going on here, but we do need to balance out the length that we see on the right side. So one way you can do that is to hold this up together and use the same over direction and elevation and point cut to match the lengths. And just for some insurance, walk it all the way back over and see if there's still something there that needs to be evened out. So I see a variation of length here that I wanna get rid of. And by doing that now, we are setting ourselves up for success because we don't have to do any refinement because the hair is now even on both sides. Now this section here, I mean, for anyone just joining, for anyone wanting to know again, we have a really strong zigzag here at the crown that's going to fall over this one length haircut at the bottom. So I'm simply gonna take this down and detangle it. Detangling that hair and splitting it into two. This is going to basically work as a waterfall or a veil over the back. So where this section here goes from the scalp to the ends, it's a one length haircut. We're going to add some movement over the top of that by using kind of a convex, um, sorry, a concave layering technique. So separating this into two sections, it's very simple, just a zigzag. The over direction here is going to really do all the work for us. So I'm taking this whole section here and instead of cutting this to the guide at my fringe area, I'm going to cut it to the guide below the parietal ridge. So all this hair right here that lives below the parietal ridge, I'm gonna lift it up. Now the longer, the, the higher I hold this, the more layering I'm gonna get. The lower I hold this, the more length I'm going to preserve. So I need to find my guide right there and I'm cutting into all of this right here. Right where that guide was. It's traveling from the crown all the way down to her chin. The, when this is held with tension down by the chin, I'm maintaining the most length. When it's up here, it's traveling less. So this is a straight line. So instead of it being a curved line traveling all the way down here, it's simply coming from the crown out. So I will get more of a layered effect if I hold it up. So if you want more layers, hold it with more elevation, less layers, less elevation. Now take the other side right into that and I can use that previous section as a guide and use some deep point cutting to create that veil that we need for the back. Any hair that has dried out, re-wet with water. And zero, zero elevation, but maximum over direction. 
so checking for balance here. Now, because I am explaining every step, it is taking me quite a bit of time to get through this very small section of the face frame and the crown, but just know that when you attempt to do this on your own, you can do this in a lot less time. So the point is for this to be more of an express haircut or those finer hair types, but you're delivering a result that you can't with maybe a basic haircut that we've all learned or if we've all been doing the same kind of haircutting. We're using the same techniques, but we're, we're using, we're just shifting it a little bit. We're shifting our knowledge, we're shifting all of the things we already know and using that to create better results for our clients. So here we go, we've got this here. You can look for your guide right underneath there. Now you can see also there's a lot less hair being cut. So all this over direction as you bring sections in, the first section is always gonna be the section where most of the hair comes off. So don't be afraid because as you work towards the last section, you're gonna notice that less and less is coming off as you work, which is just going to reassure you that you are cutting you're not cutting into that length. You're actually creating a blend into that length for the previous sections to fall over. All right, so that's it. That's all we have for the cutting portion of this. We can now get all this hair out of your client's face. Something to tell them is that their hair will be in their face for the majority of the haircut, but that is how I've learned I can find the most the most uh, effective result is when I'm using elevation and over direction and that means I need to be working in the front of the face. Just like if we're doing an A-line haircut, I'm going to be working pulling everything to the back. Everything comes right back here and that's where you get that extreme length graduation forward. So it's going from gradually short, gradually going to long. That's what we're doing, we're kind of switching it around but also using extreme over direction, wrapping it around the face. So one thing I like to do is check to see visually what does it look like when it's damp because that's this is the time where I can go in and adjust anything. But most of the time, I'm already seeing some of this hair expand out, whereas before it was falling straight. So I'm ready to blow dry. I'm going to use the IGK Beach Club Bouncy Blowout Cream. Um, this is you, a little bit goes a long way and I use this on the back of her hair. So you get a nice soft bounce with this, nice soft finish. So I'm just gonna use a little bit. And create a foundation for this style. I like to put it on both sides of my hands. And something great about working at Ulta is that right now we have a back bar takeover with IGK. So IGK has sent us all of their products, all of their um, shampoos and conditioners, including the new Good Behavior shampoo and conditioner which i also used on ashani for this live so we get to try out something almost every month to every two months any product that i sold here typically will make its way into the salon so all the stylists and the clients can get a feel for what that's like so one perk of working here is that also just knowing that right now i've been asked to do a live and partner with btc and Ulta Beauty on creating a live. It's just one of the many opportunities that we get asked to do as Ulta Beauty is really plugged into the media as far as the hair media goes. I'm the show.com, one of the biggest ones, obviously one of my favorites to work with. Um, I'll always, always be grateful that Ulta mentions my name and mentions also the people that I work with in some of the salons in the LA area to be part of this, so. I'm really working this in. I have it on both sides of my hands so that when I run my hands through, I am getting it from, I'm getting the underneath, I'm getting the top. So when I go like this, it's also on the palms of my hands. That way, I know I'm getting even distribution here. Now that the hair is air drying, it's air drying, it's probably about 75% dry. I don't need to rough dry, but if we have wet down our client extensively during the cut we want to rough dry this product in but she already has the perfect amount of moisture in her hair to get right into the blow dry so when we're talking about blow drying i want to grab one of my favorite tools here 
I have two brushes. So right now I have a Olivia Garden large, medium to large round brush, and I also have this little one. I will always, always, always try to do most of the haircut with this little one, um, especially on fine hair, because it's going to overcompensate for that curl that we know is going to fall. So I'm gonna start on the hair that is the shortest. Typically when we're working on any type of fringe, this one's more of a faux fringe, but if we're working on any type of fringe, we want to style that first because if our hair is air drying 100% at the fringe, that hair is going to stay in that formation. So any texture that they have, anything, any frizz, that's going to be hardwired into the hair until it's re-wet and restyled. So I want to take care of that first. So one thing is that when I'm teaching my client how to blow dry their fringe, I see them talk about going like this a lot under and forward. I think it's probably what we've seen the most. It's what is most comfortable for us to do, but I like to challenge everyone to switch the angles up a little bit. So knowing how I cut this, I need to set my, so my client up for success in how they're going to style this. So for any stylists watching, this is also something that I do behind the chair when I'm creating a style for my client and they don't want to know how to do it at home. I'll use my elevation and I'll also switch my direction to away from the face. So I'm elevating it up and I'm going to be rolling my brush towards myself. This is going to lift the hair up off the root but also create a flip on the ends. I won't be talking when I am blow drying but I will be doing section by section explaining to you how this works. One thing before we get started is when we're doing a blowout on fine hair we really want to lower the heat setting so lowering the heat setting here to medium just to make sure that I am not on a setting that's too high and ultimately ultimately flattening the hair so lower heat setting and sometimes even a lower power setting will help create more volume on fine hair so lower both of those to medium speed and medium heat Okay, now that I have worked this section with heat, I'm going to hit with the cold shot. So when I'm hitting with the cold shot, I'm focusing on getting it all the way around the brush. So if I have to release the brush a little bit to get inside here, I'll do that. And then also working on getting these little hairs to go back into it as well, as this section should fall seamlessly when we're done styling it. So if your client's gonna wear their hair to the side, you would wanna let it cool over to the side. But if they wanna wear it in the middle, we wanna set that up now too. So as this continues to cool, we want to let it fall right where our client's gonna wear it. You can use a brush to do this, or you can also just use your hands, but the brush will help direct you in the right direction as far as like the hairs going and falling in the right places. So here, just for a visual, the brush is gonna help me stretch this hair out over. And we can let this cool while we think about the next section. But now you can see everything here on her forehead is lifted. It's just more volume. And that's not necessarily because of the blowout, it's because of the cutting. We're gonna work, we're gonna work all the way back on this mohawk section to allow this to cool, and then we're gonna flip it all over to the side to do the other side. So let's take more of this here, the next section. And once we get to the hairs that are longer, we really want to 
think about shifting over to that other brush. Maybe we need a brush that is somewhere in between the large and this really small one. So using multiple brushes has been game changing for me when doing a blowout because I'm cutting so many different layers into the hair that I need different brushes that match different lengths. All right, blow dryer went out. I think we have another one in here. Great. Right, now that we've hit it with a cold shot, we're going to let it fall and then direct it the way we want it to live. We want it flippier, we want it enhanced that right now. If we want it all going away from the face, we want it to cool that way. So let's have that fall as we work. And now that we're at these longer lengths that we created at the crown, I'm going to work on that now. So I'm going to take a bigger section. Now best practice with this bigger section here is that we want to use a, a section size the same size as our brush the same width as our brush so it makes it a lot easier because we have the same size section so if we have a section bigger then we might be we might be experiencing the hair falling out of the brush that might not be exactly ideal as we want to work fast so if we have sections the same width as our brush then we're set up for success now we can work faster as well. So just going ahead, warming up the root here. I'm going to Split this into two and practice what I preach here because I need a smaller section so this hair does not fall out of the brush. Sometimes stepping in front makes it a lot easier because, sorry, sometimes stepping in front makes it a lot easier because we can use the airflow to our advantage. Again, we'll start to see these layers start to trickle down from short to long here, really giving us that like retro but butterfly vibe here. And we have not lost any of her length, but these layers are falling right into the length. So let's finish off this last section here. Now the main thing with blow dries is elevation, which is what you're seeing here, and over direction, which is what you're seeing here. So I wanna always be living above the head. So if I have to lower my client down, that is also a lot more ideal for my 
himself, but also for the also for the results of my client's hair. So just working those ends. was me doing the cold shot and now I have my longest section here which is going to fall just right over the end so you can see this is just enough to where it looks like it's layered into the rest of the hair but we didn't cut into the length there so we have a good blend this is more of like that faux layering where when this is falling over, we don't have a whole lot of a difference. It's a veil, so it's falling right over the backdrop. And when she wears it forward, she'll also have the same thing. So just to give you guys a visual of the thing here in the side section, we're gonna do a section with the whole section so we can blend this into the back. So, Now, what I was just doing was detangling with heat, and now I'm going to shift over to elevation and over direction. Now that that is finished, we can see the short to long length that we created and how much length we've preserved here around the face as well. All right, so this is the visual that we have so far with all of this layering around the face and it falls right into the back, it gives us Oops, sorry, Shani. <laughs> Gives us a nice faux layered haircut look here without cutting into all this length. And her hair is fine and at a medium density, but we have a gorgeous look that is different from just having a one length haircut from the roots to the ends. We have one more section to go through. And we'll just quickly go through that as it is just the side section. So what we'll do... is below dry with elevation. If the hair is detangled, we are good to go with elevation and overdress. That was our last section, so let's go back to the middle part here and just pull everything forward. Now, I don't have a mirror, so I'm going to step up here 
and arrange the hair the way that I want it. So I'm gonna enhance these curtain bangs, detangle them if I have to. And now we've got like a fully layered haircut on fine hair and we didn't remove any length or density from the ends. So I know that was a lot of information. Thank you for bearing with me through this, but I really hope that this is helpful for anyone cutting fine hair and that you feel more confident creating layers on fine hair types. I'll see you guys in the comments.